What's up guys, welcome back. This is my monthly builds video for June 2020. In this series, I help you guys pick the parts for the computers that you might build because a lot of people are fairly comfortable putting a computer together, but picking the parts can often be a daunting task. Excellent. Now, just to be clear, I'm not actually building any of these computers today, so if you would like to see any of my tutorials on how to assemble a computer with step-by-step -step instructions, check out my how to build a PC computer videos. I'll link a few of those down in the video's description. And since what I'm recommending today is AMD builds, uh, all of those instructions should line up exactly with the build I'm recommending you guys put together right now. I also have a playlist with all of my tutorials that goes through not just building the system, but also doing everything that you need to set it up afterwards, getting Windows installed, getting you from the point where you have a pile of parts to actually gaming on your system. So again, links to all that stuff is down in the video's description. Today, I am going to be going over the parts that you voted for last month, but also consider clicking on the Stropple link in the description and voting on what PC build or builds you want to see in July. We got a patriotic themed build, we got like a 2080 Ti system, entry level workstation, or an overkill water cooled high end gaming system. And then of course here are the results from last month about June and it was pretty unanimous, I don't want to say unanimous, but about two thirds of the votes were for AMD B550 builds, uh, Intel 10th gen, just the excitement isn't really there as much, probably because the performance compared to the prices weren't as compelling as what AMD currently has. And AMD, of course, B550 is what we're recommending right now. But right now, it's the beginning of June, and B550 isn't launching until June 16th. So you guys are gonna have to wait just a little bit before you can assemble the system that I am recommending today. However, I have done my very best to ensure that all the parts I'm recommending can actually be purchased since stock and inventory levels haven't exactly been the greatest recently. Now, this, this system also, since you guys wanted a mid-range B550 system, is sort of a follow-up to this uh, system that I built back in November 2019. It got about 1.6 million views, so a lot of people were interested in this system System. So this is sort of a, a takeoff of this with some updated parts uh, with what's currently available. Speaking of what's currently available, what's currently not available are a lot of like the previously recommended budget options for an AMD Ryzen build, such as the MSI B450 Tomahawk Max. Currently unavailable. You don't want to get like the original Tomahawk, which is apparently selling for like 300 bucks. These B450 and B550 motherboards, the B450 boards, I wouldn't spend more than 100 to 115 dollars for. The B550 motherboards are probably going to sell for a bit more than that. And according to this PC Gamer article, uh, some are even selling for more than like the entry level X570 motherboards. So this is all stuff that you got to take into consideration as this new generation of motherboards launches. What I want is is like the MSI B450 Tomahawk version on B550. And I don't know if MSI is gonna be the one to produce that board this time around, or if it's gonna be Gigabyte or Asus, or maybe all three of them will produce a nice, compelling entry-ish level option for I'm gonna say $120 to $140 that people can buy and use for a long time and upgrade to a high-end processor and maybe a 4000 series AMD processor when those launch either later this year or the beginning of next year. With all of that said though, here is my actual build, my actual parts list uh, over on PC Part Picker and it's linked in the description if you wanna check it out. Some cool things that we're looking at if you're comparing to uh, when I did this build about six months ago. It's not too much cheaper, it's still right around $900. It's coming in at $885 right now, according to PC Part Picker, if you buy all these at their lowest prices. The Ryzen 5 3600, though, which is the cheapest six-core processor that uses uh, the third-gen Ryzen stuff, the seven nanometer stuff that supports PCI Express Gen 4, and that has really good price to performance as well as efficiency. That's come down to about $167. It used to sell for around $200. The 3600X, you can now find for about $200. So that's uh, totally a viable one to swap in for this. The B550 Aorus Pro that I'm recommending from Gigabyte is uh, supposed to sell for 130 bucks though. I just did a manual part entry for that. And then beyond that, we have uh, some components I've used in builds before, like this G-Skill RAM kit that I have confirmed works uh, with AMD Ryzen CPUs. We've got a 500 gig SSD. We have the RTX 2060 KO from EVGA, which should sell for around $300. We have a $70 case, and we have uh, what's ending up being a 70 or $80, 650 watt, 80 plus bronze rated power supply. So I'm gonna go over these parts one at a time and for each one that I feel like there might be a compelling alternative to, 
I will introduce you to that as well. So we're starting off with the Ryzen 5 3600. Look how universally available this is for $167. This keeps just getting a little bit cheaper, like three or five dollars at a time, coming down from $200 over the past, uh, I don't know, six months or so. So a great deal and a great sort of starting off point uh, from the Ryzen, for the Ryzen platform. Now there's potentially a better starting off point for less money if you're looking at, at the amount of money you're spending in the 3300X that was just launched supposedly a couple weeks ago. However, this can't be found anywhere. It's not currently in stock at Amazon. Newegg has it listed, but it's $200. This is a $120 CPU. Do not spend 200 bucks for this. Just get a 3600X. And I hate stupid resellers who try to do this, but point being though, if you're looking for sort of the entry level option for or AM4 with the PCI Express 4.0 support with a B550 motherboard. Uh, I would point you towards these new Ryzen 3 CPUs, uh, but I can't do that until they're actually available for sale. So for that reason, stick with the 3600 or 3600X. And then the motherboard that I've chosen today is the AMD, I'm sorry, the Gigabyte B550 Aorus motherboard. And this should sell for $130 according to Gigabyte. So if you compare this to like one of the B450 motherboards, like say the B450 Tomahawk that was recommended so often. It's a good looking board with the same feature set. Uh, it's going to get you an upgrade to PCI Express 4.0, uh, which is a nice boost for people who are actually going to make use of that bandwidth. Now, I don't have this board personally, so I haven't been able to independently test it. So, uh, you know, is the power delivery actually really good? Does it overheat or anything like that? I can't tell you for sure. So it is definitely going to be worth your while to wait a couple weeks until the launch of B550. And then hopefully we'll be able to see some independent reviews on this to make sure it's okay. That said, based on Gigabyte's track record and just based on some of the specs listed for this board, it seems like a pretty viable option. It has the look of a higher end board. I'd say it looks pretty nice with the mostly blacked out aesthetic. It does have some RGB lights on it and some headers available for those of you who want to bling out your system. It does not have some of the more uh, high end features like the USB 3.2 Gen 2 front panel header or surface mounted power and reset buttons or a debug LED, but it does have plenty of fan headers and it appears like it will give you all the functionality you need in the same way that the B450 Tomahawk did for about $130. But let me reiterate one more time, I have not independently tested this board, so uh, take this recommendation with a little bit of a grain of salt and maybe peruse the various B550 motherboards at launch to get an idea of if there's one that uh, fits your needs better or your budget or your aesthetic tastes. Beyond that though, I'm using a lot of tried and true components such as this G-Skill Ripjaws 5 16 gig kit. 16 gigs is what you should start off with with a gaming PC. There's even an argument to go for more than that, but that's the nice thing about a 16 gig kit. It's only using two of your DIMM slots. If you need 32, you can get the same kit again and add it in and then you'll have more memory. It's only about $80 at Newegg and Amazon and I've personally tested this kit. It's plug and play with the Ryzen 3000 series CPUs uh, with XMP and it is uh, cast latency 16. There is a slightly less expensive version of this kit. It's cast latency 18, uh, but it's only about a $5 difference. For storage, I recommend getting started with a 500 gig SSD. And that could be a 2.5 inch SSD like this one, or that could be an M.2 NVMe SSD, but M.2 NVMe SSDs cost more. So if you look at the storage options for SSDs, you can sort them on PC part picker by price per gigabyte. Uh, and this one's pretty good for that. There are some less expensive ones uh, than the SU760, but this one does not use QLC NAND flash memory. So it's gonna be a little bit faster. If you find an alternative SSD than this one, no big deal, they're all gonna perform pretty similarly to one another. Uh, but I would keep an eye on the one terabyte SSDs because you can get those for a little bit less price per gigabyte wise. You can find one terabyte uh, SATA SSDs for less than $100 pretty regularly now. And then of course, if you're looking for long-term usage of the system you're putting together, 512 gigs is probably gonna be a little slim. So keep an eye out for other deals on hard drives or maybe consider repurposing a hard drive from a system that you already have. For a graphics card, we always have the, uh, should you get AMD Radeon or should you get Nvidia GeForce? Uh, for this build, I'm recommending the RTX 2060 KO, which is a six gig graphics card. And it does have the advantage of the newest NV Inc uh, integrated hardware encoder. So if you're gonna be uh, streaming, gaming and streaming at the same time or capturing your gameplay footage, you can use that with this card. It works really well and it's pretty minimal uh, impact on your gameplay, uh, which is really cool. That said, with the six core AMD AMD Ryzen 5 processor, you can use x86 encoding to do encoding with your CPU. 
you, uh, but it's kind of nice to have both options. Now an RTX 2060 for $300, I feel it kind of negates the tier below this from Nvidia. If you're going one step down, you'd be looking at a GTX 1660 Ti, but those are selling for like $260 to $280, and I think it's really worth your while to just bump up for another 20 or 30 bucks to the RTX 2060 6 gig. Meanwhile, on the AMD side, you could absolutely make an argument for the 5700 or 5700 XT. The 5700, you can often find for around 300 bucks. So it's a very uh, good competitor for the RTX 2060 and does outperform it if you're just looking at frame rates in quite a few different games. So consider that, especially if you don't think you're gonna make use of the NVENC encoder in the RTX 2060. The 5600 XT, however, which is also on this list since I'm looking at 5600 XTs, 5700s, and 5700 XTs are a little overpriced in my opinion compared to the RTX 2060 KO. So for my money, for around $300 for a graphics card, either RTX 2060 KO or the RX 5700 for around $300. Again, it's just whether you want more raw performance or you want the advantage of that NVENC encoder with the NVIDIA card. If you really want to shave some money off of the overall cost of this build and still get yourself a gaming system with a discrete graphics card, I would recommend a temporary GPU in the AMD RX 570. You should be able to find the four gig model of that for between 100 and 130 dollars. That'll get you up and running with a decent graphics card for gaming at 1080. And then you'd probably plan to sell that and swap in something better somewhere down the road. That's the beauty of building your own computer. You can swap in and out parts and upgrade it further down the line. Finally, we need a case and a power supply, and I could recommend several cases that would uh, be perfectly good for this build. You're looking for a, an ATX mid-tower case and probably spending around $70 to $90. I've recommended the Fractal Meshify C in the past. That's typically more like $90 to $100. Bucks. The NZXT H510 comes with two fans installed, is a good-looking case, has a tempered glass side panel, has a nice power supply basement in the bottom, which lets you get away with a non-modular PSU. However, this does appear to be maybe the only item on this list right now that you might have a hard time just buying straight up, except for, I guess, the B550 motherboards that aren't available for two weeks. Uh, but this is supposedly available at Best Buy and it's sold out. This case comes in a variety of colors and finishes though, so you should be able to find uh, a different color or a different finish perhaps, or again, plenty of viable ATX cases that sort of meet those qualifications I was talking about for $70 to $90 if this one isn't exactly your cup of tea when it comes to the aesthetics or if you just can't find it in stock. Finally, you need a power supply. Seasonic is a really reputable power supply manufacturer. They actually OEM for a lot of other brands who rebrand Seasonic power supplies as their own. This is the S12 III, 650 watts and 80 plus bronze. You want a 550 watt minimum power supply. 650 watts is probably a little bit better if you want some headroom for upgrading a graphics card potentially in the future. 80 plus bronze is okay. If you can go for 80 plus gold, that's cool too. But power supplies are one of those products that have gotten more expensive in the past six months to a year for various reasons, including tariffs as well as the pandemic. So that's why there's not as many good viable power supply options in the 40 to $60 range. You're paying closer to 70 or 80 bucks for this. That said, it's not modular, but it has all black cables. It's quiet and it has good internals. So uh, that's, that's, that's really what a power supply should be doing. And I can confidently recommend this one. Again, I would recommend if you are getting a non-modular power supply, make sure you get a case that has a nice enclosed basement. That way, if you have an extra grip of cables that you aren't routing anywhere, you can just tuck them in down there. It will hide them. And then if you take pictures of your computer and send them to me and Kyle for us to critique on Pit My PC on our Tuesday evening live show, uh, you, you'll have less to be embarrassed about. Also, just having a nice looking system after you get it all put together is, is nice. I appreciate it. Cable management should never be ignored, but I think I have gone on long enough uh, with this video. So guys, if you're interested in any, any of the parts I've talked about or that full PC part picker list, uh, check the description for lots of those links down there, as well as my supplemental tutorials for assembling a PC and getting it all set up afterwards. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. We'll see you in the next one.